Today we're going to be breaking down the Cherry 11 High and I'll be showing you different comparisons between the low tops, the Concords, the football cleats, talking about a couple sneakers from the past and we'll be matching them up against the Winlight 96s to see which one people like the most. But before we get started with all that, we got to talk about the history first. We originally saw the Air Jordan 11 debut in 1996 and two of the most iconic colorways were the Bread 11s and the Concord 11s. Ever since then, the Air Jordan 11 has been one of the most sought after sneakers and over the past 10 years, every single Christmas, Jordan brand loves to drop an Air Jordan 11 for a Christmas sneaker. There have been a bunch of different colorways and stories behind each one, and this one in particular is special to a lot of sneakerheads because we've never seen the Cherry 11 in a high top version. We originally saw the low top in 2001, and I'm telling you right now, that was a great time and era. I'm sure all you guys remember seeing the Cool Gray 11's debut around that time as well, and that became some sneakerheads favorite Air Jordan 11 colorway. 15 years later, we then saw a retro version in 2016 of the Cherry 11 low, but everybody wanted the high still. And after we saw the low top, a lot of people started to talk about what would it look like if there was a high top version. Immediately in my head, I thought about the primetime Deion Sander Air Jordan 11 PEs with the turf bottoms. I know they're not exactly the same with the bottoms and everything, but either way, the color blocking is very similar. And that was a shoe that popped up in my head when I thought, what would the high top look like? Following that release two years later, we did get a high top version, but it ended up being a cleat. Some of you know, I did play football all the way through college. So with me being a sneakerhead, you know, I had to get all the different cleats that Jordan brand dropped. During this time we saw a lot of people taking the cleat bottoms off of these shoes right here and putting the uppers onto a basketball shoe and creating their own cherry 11 highs because that was all we could get now fast forward a few more years and we are currently in 2022 where we have the cherry 11 highs right here starting with the bottom of the foot you can see you have your translucent icy blue outsole with the red pods on the front and back end you got your red and black carbon fiber and a white jump man in the center of that wrapping up to the side of the foot you have your classic all white midsole and then on the upper it's pretty simple with the basic two-tone color blocking, red patent leather with the white mesh and leather on the back end, red sock liner, white 23 on the heel, and then a red Jumpman stitched on the side. These come equipped with a standard pair of all-white rope laces. Typically, Jordan 11s don't come with a pair of secondary laces, and I haven't really heard too many people complain about that aspect. Now, on your white mesh tongue, you have a white patch stitched right here with Jumpman Jordan in black text with the red Jumpman in the center of that, something that we always get on the Jordan 11s, and everybody loves that hit as well. Now, looking at the back side of the tongue, you have a red mesh and then it says quality basketball products inspired by the greatest player ever with the Jumpman logo in the center of that. Again, another iconic touch when it comes to Jordan 11s in particular. Now, because this shoe isn't a retro of an OG colorway, they decided to put the Jumpman on the inside. If you look at the Concords, those have the Nike Air on the inside because that's more resemblance of the OG colorway from back in the day. So speaking of the Concords, let's talk about this real quick when it comes to the comparisons and why I brought them into this video because I feel like this is a very classic nostalgic sneaker that you can never never go wrong with but it is very very similar to the cherry and it kind of draws me to have another question for you guys which I'll ask in a second but basically this shoe right here color blocking materials everything the cuts of the shoe how high it's cut on the back end everything like that this has that OG style and OG cut and all of our retro 11s that we're starting to get over the past few years are coming in this cut and there's a huge debate between if people like it or not Yes, me personally, I think it's great because it does resemble the OG style and OG cut. But I know a lot of people do like that lower slimmer cut when it comes to the patent leather and how big it is on the side of the foot or how low it hits on the back end around the heel. So let me know what you guys think about that when it comes to the different cuts of the two shoes. Now, another thing that me and my dad was talking about when it comes to the Cherry 11 right here, the outsoles, they actually did it a little bit different than the classic Concord right here. They both have that blue icy outsole, but the Concord is a lot more translucent. It doesn't look as foggy and it's not really as blue looking. If you put these two side by side, you can see the differences when I talk about that right there. So hopefully that gives you guys a better perspective on how they did it with the OG and how this one's kind of a little bit more milkier ice blue compared to the more translucent ice blue on the Concord version, which is another thing that's very interesting because on previous retros from the past, we have definitely seen ice blue outsoles on Jordan 11s, but every time it's always a little bit different. Like they always have a different hue or a different gradient to it when it comes to the transparency and everything like that. So I'm always interested to see what they decide to do in the future as well when it comes to new retros and how they do the outsoles. Will they stay consistent with this style? Will they go back to this style? Will they try other styles? I guess it's something that us sneakerheads pay attention to a little bit too much. So there's a couple questions that I have for this shoe in particular. 
which one do you like more? Do you like the Concords or do you like the Cherries? And honestly, I know this is a crazy question to some sneakerheads because they're like, how could you not pick the Concords? But there's actually people that do like the Cherries more than the Concords. And I understand that. You may have just got into the shoe game and this is your grail and that makes complete sense. And some of the older heads know the history and nostalgia behind this and they have more, you know, uh, relationship with this sneaker than they do with this one. So I get that as well. Or you could just simply think that this color is better than these and I can understand that too. Even though I think the Concord has a richer history and goes with more outfits, at the end of the day, you buy what you like and like what you like. So I posed that question and I wanted to see what people thought and this is what they said. 83% of the people chose the Concords and 17% of the people chose the Cherries, which again, like I said, people are going to like this one more than that one. I completely understand. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section about that. I got some other comparisons with the cleats and the cherries and everything for you guys to show you the results because some of them are actually pretty interesting when it comes to the percentages. Now, the other question I posed, you have this version, black and white, red and white. Okay, cool. Well, what if they did yellow and white, blue and white, green and white, purple and white? You see what I'm saying? There's so many different ways that you could go with this simple color blocking and just change this color. Because when I think of purple and white, automatically in my head, I think Randy Moss PE. I know it's not exactly because it's got the gold and everything, but either way, that shoe is fire. Like imagine they released that to the public. I would go crazy. I would have to have those. Like there's no way I couldn't have multiples. I would be rocking that shoe like insane. I, that would just be crazy in my head. But either way, what do you think about that? There's certain color blocking styles that come on each model that could easily be translated into any color. You could literally take this style and put it into any type of color on the color palette and create the entire rainbow with this style, just like we see with the toe pack or the metallic fours with the different colors like that. You name it, there's so many different variations you could go with this. I, I know I don't like orange, but I feel like the orange might look a little bit cool on these as well. But you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of different options. I don't know, I just wanted to pose the question and see what you guys thought about that as well. Now, let's take it to the low tops and get to that comparison. This is the greatest comparison simply because you have the low top which was the og and this is our iteration of that as the retro this is a 2016 retro either way very similar to the og the shape of the shoe is a little bit different to the og but when it comes to color blocking this is what it looked like from what we originally saw and what we had for the past 20 years so when i saw this right here and they did the red sock liner on the upper part of me was kind of like Ah, I wish they would have did all white on the upper and kept it super clean like they did on the low tops. But I get it, maybe you could say, hey, they cut it off at that part and that's where the red part was missing. So if it were to be a high top, this is what it were to look like. And like I said, the color blocking is very similar to the Concord, which also makes sense. But I wanna see what you guys think about that. Let me know what you think about the sock liners down below in the comment section because I will be comparing this sock liner to the cleat version because I ain't gonna lie, the cleat version does look kinda clean too, the way they did that sock liner as well. We'll get into that in a second, but basically, I'm interested to see what you guys think about the sock liner colors with the white and the red. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Now, besides all that, when it comes to color blocking and the different things like that, on the tongue, you have a black text with the red jump man, and then on these, you have more of a gray text with the red jump man, so that's gonna be the slight difference right there, and then obviously, these are older and have been worn, so I can understand those things. Now, we all know the Air Jordan 11 comes with the baby red jump man on the back. It's always hilarious talking about this little jump man right here. But besides that, yes, you have the red jump man with the red stitch. And on the heel right here, you have a black 23 compared to on the back of these. There's slight changes when it comes to these two shoes, but overall to the untrained sneakerhead eye, they're gonna look at these two shoes and say, hey, that's a low top version. This is the high top version, who cares? Another thing that I noticed when it comes to these two shoes and the differences as well, if you look at the outsoles right here, you can see obviously, like I said, this one's been worn but this has a black carbon fiber and this is a red and black carbon fiber and then yes you still have the same color pods the translucent outsole and the white jump man but they did two completely different carbon fibers on these two shoes so do you think it would have looked better if it had the black carbon fiber white stitch different coloring and everything like that or what does it look good like this but I don't know, it's kind of interesting because they call it the Cherry 11 High and this is the Cherry 11 Low, yet they didn't do it exactly the same. Something to take note of, I just wanted to make those comparisons so you guys can see the differences if you didn't know that there were differences between these two shoes. Now, my question for a lot of people, because you got a lot of OG heads out there that are like, 
the cherry high don't beat the low. Like you can't go wrong with the lows. Like this is what started it. If it wasn't for these, you wouldn't have these. I get that. So I posted a poll and this is what the people said. 27% of the people chose the lows and 73% of the people chose the highs. I completely understand these results. The high is a lot better in a lot of models and some people don't even like low top Jordans at all. So there's that conversation as well. So I can understand that. And then other people is gonna go off of nostalgia and memories of the low top versions with the UNC colorway or the snake skin colorway. All those OG colorways from back in the day definitely will always hit home for sneakerheads that's been in the game for a long time. So I could understand that standpoint as well. So now this one is very interesting for me because the football cleat, oh man, this is the first iteration that we saw that released to the public before these. So this was kind of like burned in my mind over the past four or five years now. And I'm like, oh, when they release the basketball version, it's gonna look just like the cleat version. You're gonna have the black sock liner, the black patch on the tongue, and everything else is gonna be pretty much similar. So obviously, yes, if you look at the outsoles, they are gonna be different. You're gonna have a cleated bottom and a basketball bottom. Materials on the upper. Now, this is one thing that's super dope about the cleats. They're football cleats. So that means they're gonna make really, really durable materials on the mesh and everything like that. So you can actually wear the cleat and you don't have to worry about somebody stepping on it and different things like that. So they make it a lot thicker and more firm when it comes to the fit and rocking it. I get, yes, you're still gonna play sports in this and it's gonna be basketball. But if somebody steps on your foot with a basketball bottom, there's definitely a way less likely chance that somebody's gonna rip through your shoe simply because there's no cleat on the bottom of the foot. Now, besides that, you can see the difference between the toe cap on the front end where you have the rubber that wraps up or the overall cut of the red patent leather throughout the side and the back end of the foot. It's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to the height and shape of these two shoes, which like I said, they had to alter a little bit for football purposes and performance. And then you got the black sock liner compared to the red sock liner on here. On the back end of these two, you do have the 23 with the white, but on the front end, like I said earlier on the tongue, you got the white patch with the black and red, and then you got the black patch with the white and red right here. So a little bit of a difference between these two. But again, a lot of people did like this black colorway on this sock liner and everything. And I wonder if this were actually to be a basketball version, how much people would really like these. So I posted that same poll and obviously, yes, it's a cleat. So there might be skewed in the differences in the results. This is what the people said. 18% of the people chose the cleats and 82% of the people chose the basketball shoes. I saw a lot of comments though that were saying, bro, how do people not get the cleats? The cleats look better when it comes to the colorway. Yes, the results may have looked that way, but I had the most feedback from that one in particular was people commenting on the poll results, letting me know like, yo, these are crazy, these are crazy. It's very interesting to see how, you know, everybody perceives the shoes and how they feel about them and everything like that. So I wanna see what you guys think as well. Make sure you guys drop some comments down below for this one. Let me know what you think about these two. Now, when it comes to the win like 96s, I wanted to see what you guys think and I want you to put the poll results, which you think the poll results would be down below in the comment section. So do you think it's like 60, 40 or like, 30, 70 or whatever, I don't know. Let me know what you think when it comes to these two comparisons. You have two very similar shoes, but they look so different at the same time. Yes, they're both red, but with the all red version and the red and white version, you can pull off two completely different outfits. It's so funny how a simple change in the color blocking can alter the entire look of a shoe and make them look completely different at the same time. If I could go between these two, I think I probably would go with the cherry just because I feel like it's got more of a classic nostalgic color blocking to it that fits a little bit better for me. So after seeing all these comparisons and the styles, cuts, materials, the differences and everything like that, let me know what you guys think about the shoe. Did you cop this shoe? Is this a gift? Do you think they're gonna go up crazy in price? All the different stuff. Everybody has their projections. We all know the classic holiday Air Jordan 11 is always a hit and we know it's gonna go for, you know, the retail's 225, whatever it may be, and it's selling for 300, 350 right after the drop, and everybody wants it for Christmas. The price goes down a little bit midway through the year next year, and then next thing you know, a year or two years later from now, the shoe's gonna be $450, $500 shoe, depending on where you're shopping at, all the different stuff. So it's the same cycle when it comes to pricing on this sneaker. If you like the shoe, go get it. I know there has been a lot of competition this year, so some people have been saying they might not land on their top 10 list, but for a vast majority of the people, once they get the shoe in hand, once they start rocking it, they're gonna love it. And I know for a fact, you're gonna see this on the majority of people's top 10 list. So I appreciate you guys as always. I'll see you in another one. I'm out.
Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there.